The Outer Rim Sieges were the final campaigns of the Clone Wars, as the clone armies of the Republic tracked down the droid armies of the Confederacy of Independent Systems. But these battles were more than just military skirmishes. They were actually a very orchestrated set of events. So today, let's take a look at why the Outer Rim Sieges were so important to Revenge of the Sith and the Clone Wars series. The Outer Rim territories served as the primary theater of conflict during the Clone Wars. Throughout the war, the Republic struggled to contain Separatist advances throughout the Outer Rim. Confederate forces won numerous victories against the Republic in the early months of the war. This jeopardized the Republic's foothold in vital sectors and forced the closure of many Outer Rim trade routes. Additionally, as Republic forces continued to be spread thin throughout the Outer Rim, many Confederate planets that were thought to be conquered and secured began to rise up and overthrow Republic occupation forces, allowing the Separatists to prolong the conflict. As a result, vital Outer Rim worlds such as Felucia and Cato Namoidia were continuously caught in a series of engagements throughout the war. As the war progressed, the Republic was able to turn the tide of the fighting in the Outer Rim. The war had created a constant state of fear in Republic citizens. CIS droid armies began attacking planets all over the galaxy, including the Core Worlds. Nowhere was safe and it appeared the war would never end. Even though the majority of the population believed otherwise, the Republic was actually winning the war as it entered its third year. Military production and resources that had challenged the Republic in the early days of the war were no longer an issue, due in great part to the emergency powers granted to Supreme Chancellor Palpatine. Concentrating on their military buildup, Republic forces started to break down the Separatist war machine, and CIS forces were pushed back to the spiral arms of the galaxy. At no point in the war had the Separatists ever controlled a large number of systems. They never had to. They kept the unprepared Republic jumping from system to system in order to suppress Separatist insurgencies. In addition, Jedi and clone forces were constantly hunting droid fleets launching hit-and-run attacks across Republic space. The Separatists had a large fleet of warships, a variety of covert droid factories, and millions of potential targets. The Republic had two options. Either it could defend its worlds while allowing those factories to produce new armies, or it could try to retake territories, leaving Republic worlds vulnerable, both physically and in the eyes of the public. Ironically, the Republic never had to find an answer to this problem, as over time, they simply outgrew it. The Outer Rim Sieges, fought in the final year of the war, focused on six distinct theaters, Magito, Sereno, Yagdul, Presitlan, Siskin, and Felucia all named after important worlds in those regions of space. As the sieges progressed, Republic forces struggled to drive the CIS army from crucial Outer Rim worlds. The Separatists were able to establish strongholds on numerous worlds, including Magito and Cato Namordia, where they dealt the clone army significant losses. The sieges were deadlocked for a while. The CIS armies were able to spread the Jedi and clones extremely thin at first, but as the conflicts dragged on, this tactic cost the Separatists dearly. This is where the Battle of Coruscant comes in. Due to continued pressure from the Republic fleet and Jedi generals, Coruscant's fortress-like defenses were left relatively weak. Strategists for the Republic weren't concerned though. They knew the Separatists were in no position to make an attack on the capital. A move like that would likely lead to defeat and spell the end for the Separatists. The people of Coruscant were also aware of it. Since the Clone Wars had taken place far from their world, a Separatist surrender now seemed inevitable. The Coruscant Home Defense Fleet's officers had not been trained to effectively defend against a full-scale planetary attack, and few had seen action in the war. Despite the overwhelming odds, the Separatists saw an opportunity to inflict a surprising amount of damage and win a propaganda victory by attacking Coruscant. Count Dooku's death and the destruction of a third of the Separatist fleet at Coruscant, combined with ongoing losses in the sieges, all but ended the Separatists' ability to carry on the war. In an effort to drive the Republic back, Grievous withdrew to the Outer Rim world of Utapau and deployed his already drastically reduced droid army across a number of systems. Separatist forces were now in the same situation they had put the Republic in early in the war, spread over numerous Outer Rim sectors. Grievous would soon be killed by Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Anakin Skywalker, now Darth Vader, would massacre the Separatist leaders on Mustafar shortly after. The Confederacy of Independent Systems would essentially vanish with the deactivation of its droid armies. But everything had gone according to Darth Sidious's plan. 
By the time the Outer Rim sieges were over, the Separatist cause, the Jedi Order, and the Republic were all gone. The Outer Rim sieges were the key to Palpatine's final implementation of the Sith Grand Plan. He had managed to spread the entire Jedi Order throughout the galaxy, to the point they were unable to defend the Republic when he made his final play for total control. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear more about Star Wars lore, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, and may the Force be with you.